Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Regime to the Com video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing a whole slew of touring benchmarks and performance information which have popped up on the internet. So these stem from the website videocards.com, and what they have done is essentially leak a reviewer's guide set of benchmarks from NVIDIA themselves. Now I'm going to quickly go over what that actually means. So as a reviewer, you get sent a guide which gives you performance information of the graphics card, it details what architectural changes there are over its predecessor, what market segment a particular card is aiming at, the pricing information, performance information, benchmark suggestions as in we suggest you run this game, this particular card is aimed at this particular demographic at this particular resolution. Now that's not to say that you can't go outside of their particular suggestions. So for example if you decide to take a RTX 2080 tie and you want to run it on let's say Quake 1 to show the frame rate well of course that's totally down to you. Nvidia or AMD or whatever company do not necessarily uh, require you to run those games instead it's more of a general guide to say hey these are the games that we suggest with these particular settings because this card really is aimed at that particular performance level. So the other reason they provide the insights with the graphs is not so that you as a reviewer of course can copy them because that would be well really crappy and unethical <laughs> but the other reason is sim quite simple let's say that they say that you're, they are getting 62 frames a second at 4k on a particular title and you are getting let's say 75 frames a second well it's most likely a driver update is not doing that instead it's possible that you have chosen the wrong graphical preset or if it's the reverse let's say that you're getting 41 frames a second you could say okay well obviously there's something wrong with my system configuration maybe the drivers didn't take maybe i need to update the drivers and so on and so on so what nvidia do is provide the those reference numbers for you to get a rough indication of whether your system is performing as expected so of course there is a specific driver which reviewers will have access to and that driver is key when it comes to touring. This driver allows the graphics card to run at a particular performance level which has not been possible before because that driver was being held by Nvidia. Now here's the key thing though. The numbers that we're seeing, which we'll get into in just a moment, I promise, are using that driver. But of course, performance can increase. We know that Pascal, for example, had various updates with its drivers, which has increased performance of a myriad of uh, different titles, including games with DirectX 12 being heavily utilizing, let's say, asynchronous compute. Uh, we've seen that over and over, and of course, AMD have done the same thing. Now, uh, on to the performance results then. Now these are all 4K results. Now of course that does mean that your mileage may vary and it certainly will depending on your CPU configuration. It's also important for us to know uh, that there are a couple of different types of results. There's the synthetics, there's games, but Nvidia have also chosen, and I do actually really like this I must say, to include titles which uh, heavily utilize HDR and they've shown the performance jump but they have separated them compared to SDR rendering and the reason that this is really crucial uh, for those who are unfamiliar Pascal as well as previous architectures really suffered when it came to HDR rendering performance went down greater than AMD counterparts so obviously Nvidia are really keen to demonstrate whether this has been resolved or not but Anyway, enough of the talking. Once again, credit to videocards.com who have leaked this information. Once again, from a reviewer's guide. Uh, and let's get on with it, shall we? So we're going to start things out with our friend and buddy, VRMark and 3 Mark Extreme. So what do we have? Well, uh, starting with VRMark Cyan Room, we have 135 uh, of the RTX 2080 tie. I'm going to call it the 20 tie and the 10 tie and so on because otherwise I'm going to go probably crazy and you're probably going to scream at the, at the uh, device you're watching out of me constantly saying RTX 2080 and so on. So the 20 tie receives 135 frames, 135 excuse me, uh, FPS and the 10 tie receives 80. So obviously that's a considerable jump in performance. But if we were to compare the 2080, the vanilla, versus the Tentai, you're looking at 105 versus 80. I'm not going to comment on performance just yet, because I want to get some more results in. Uh, we have the 2080 tie on 3 d Mark times by Extreme, receiving 6,480 points, which is a drastic improvement of 4410 of the Tentai. And then you have the 2080, which is receiving 40, well, let's just call it 5,000 points, versus 3,260 
of the 1080 vanilla. So, in my opinion, that's a pretty nice jump in synthetics. But of course, well, it's synthetic. So, what you score in synthetics is great if you're chasing that, you know, top of the leaderboard stuff. But if you're trying to play a game, it probably is not going to really affect you too much. So, what about games then? What type of performance impact are you going to be receiving on titles? Well, let's start things out with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I can tell you that Shadow of the Tomb Raider is really, really taxing. I'm actually playing it uh, just off my own back for fun uh, on a laptop actually I've been lent by HP Computers and I might as well say this now, they have actually lent me a, a computer, uh, an Omen X, uh, Omen X laptop, excuse me, for the purposes of work because we're going to be doing some reviews of them in the future. So they suggested, hey, uh, you know, you can check this out and kind of get a feel of how the system runs. This is not a sponsored video, this is just me telling you. And it, that thing has a GTX 1070 and I can tell you that when you crank all of the settings up at 1080p, that game is really bloody demanding. It really is demanding. Uh, although I will say that the that the laptop does a really good job. It's most likely hitting like 70 to 80 FPS all the time with everything maxed up, including uh, anti-aliasing. But even so, the point being that the game is really demanding. But yeah, what numbers do you get? Well, you're looking at essentially 59 frames a second of the 2080 tie versus the 1080 tie, which is cracking barely over 40. That is a rather nice jump. And the 2080 does uh, actually outpace the 1080 tie here and just completely and utterly dominates and stomps the 1080 vanilla. What about other titles? Well, in my opinion, one of the more interesting ones is Battlefield 1. And there was a really nice reason for this because it has uh, SDR, SDR RGB 444 as well as HDR UV YHV excuse me 422 and obviously that is something that we see a rather large uh, performance impact uh, with Pascal and older cards. So for example if we were to pick on the GTX 1080 because it, it's done wrong to us not really but still we can see that the lightest bar has 44 FPS because it's using 4K HDR and so 44 FPS compared to 52 of standard SDR rendering, that's pretty big. If we, in fact, if we do a quick math on that 52 divided by 44, you're looking at a 20% uh, loss in performance. Uh, it's actually 18%. Uh, let's just round it up, shall we? Now, what about the RTX 2080 tie and the 2080? Hmm, kind of fuzzling, right? There is essentially no difference in performance. I mean, it's within margin of error stuff, this is. That's something that a driver update could basically just say there's no difference in performance. That's really good. Uh, picking on the 2080 for a second, we're looking at 72 frames a second and 73 frames a second. In fact, it actually, funnily enough, scores slightly higher on the HDR YUV422. And that's actually identical to what we're seeing on the 2080 tie as well. It's identical in terms of performance. It's like one frame per second difference. Um, Wolfenstein, the new Colossus. Wolfenstein, the new Colossus. By the way, as a small bonus piece of news, Bethesda have actually said that Wolfenstein 3 is going to be worked on, which is pretty awesome. I really like Wolfenstein. But um, anyway, so what we have here is SDR results, of course. These are, everything's maxed out on this particular uh, uh, set of tests. 54 frames a second compared to 84 frames a second, that's with the 1080 and the 2080 respectively, and the 1080 tie receives 72 frames a second, and we get over 100 frames a second with the 2080 tie. I'm not going to read out all of the results because, well, some of them are going to pop on screen, but another one that really caught my eye was The Witcher 3, which, as many people know, is extremely demanding. It's another title which uh, they've only benchmarked in standard SDR, but 43 frames a second versus 57 frames a second of the 1080 and the 1080 tie, respectively, and then you get 62 frames a second. So in that particular benchmark, you're getting 5 FPS higher with the 2080 versus the 1080 tie and 70, uh, 78 frames a second versus 57 frames a second. Those are significant numbers. I'm gonna read out one or two more results because, well, there are so many different results here. I'm not gonna read out Star Wars Battlefront uh, because, well, I don't like it that much, to be honest. <laughs> so it has no real relevance or interest to me. I'm loving like that. And I'm also gonna look at um, Mass Effect Andromeda because that's another title that really speaks to me. And finally, Hitman. So we're gonna look at three more results before I give my conclusions thus far. Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor. 
the reason I'm choosing this one is because it's another title which does have uh, standard SDR, it has HD, uh, HDR RGB 444 as well as YUV422. I don't know why I find that so bloody difficult to say, it's extremely irritating. Yeah, picking on the RTX 2080 tile, you're looking at 65 frames a second, 67 frames a second, that's inconsequential. That literally could be that the boost clock wasn't running as high on that particular time because they've run multiple loops. I'm not saying it was, I'm just giving an example here. That's the kind of margin of error that we're looking at. But compare the 2080 tie to the 1080 tie, and yes, there's a significant difference. 42 frames a second with standard SDR rendering versus 47 frames a second. In case you can't tell, NVIDIA are really keen to push that and say yes. We have fixed HDR rendering when it comes to Turing. Mass Effect Andromeda, I'm not going to read out the results, but 60 FPS, I'm not going to read out all the results, excuse me, but 60 FPS compared to 44 FPS of the two ties respectively. Once again, a fairly significant mark. Now, some people will be disappointed that you're not getting 200 FPS in Mass Effect Andromeda of 4K rendering, but to me anyway, that this is still a significant increase because there are a couple of factors that we need to consider here. First of all, this is without overclocking really coming into play. Nvidia are telling us that Turing is built for overclocking. I'm not going to weigh in one way or the other. I mean, from what they've done with the VRMs and from what I'm hearing through the grapevine, I do believe that this is the case. I do believe that there's going to be a nice increase in clock speed, but how sensitive that is, as well as how the GDDR six memory overclocks and what type of performance we're going to be getting via overclocking GDDR6 and I was are we going to be memory bandwidth staff with Turing I'm not saying we are by the way I'm just asking posing a question if we are obviously then core overclocking not so much going to help it's really going to come down to GDDR6 but I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised thus far there's also of course so much information right now regarding how Turing is going to be boosting and for those wondering because I have had a couple of comments regarding this I will be doing a full architectural overview of Turing because some people are asking me to really explain the feature set as well as the boosting side of things so that's something I am working on and I'm hoping to have that up before we start reviewing the cards uh, over the next couple of weeks uh, because we're going to be doing a lot of testing we're not just going to be doing like standard uh, frame benchmarks so there's going to be a lot of testing of touring over the next couple of weeks for you guys so definitely do stick around for that and I'm going to give one last uh, set of results which is for Hitman. Hitman uh, 91 frames a second and that is significant when you look at the fact that all of the various rendering methods whether it's HDR, whether it's SDR, whatever are getting 91, 92 frames a second. If you were to look at standard SDR rendering yeah okay you're getting 72 frames a second with the 1080 tie which is not that big of a difference to some people but when you look at HDR rendering which is really, to be honest, the future. I mean, HDR, most people now, if they're connecting it to a TV, have got HDR. If you've got a modern display, it's most likely that you're probably going to be considering HDR. So what NVIDIA are doing here is, yes, they're increasing performance with titles, but there are a couple of key things that I think a lot of people are going to be really taking away from this. The first is that HDR performance has gone up through the roof, which is really good news. It means that there's actually a greater delta if you were to look at that. Yes, it doesn't make that much difference if you have an SDR screen, but there's a good chance that if you do upgrade, well, you get where I'm going with this. The second is the boosting is going to be more considerably higher and well it's going to overclock better and of course you've got other specific Turing architecture stuff and I'm not even including ray tracing here I'm more referring to DLSS which a lot of developers seem to be jumping on and so on. So my first impressions of what we're hearing about this and speaking to people and going through the industry grapevine I do believe that Turing is going to be a really nice jump. Whether it's enough for you to jump ship, that's of course down to you, your cash flow, your wallet, your desire to upgrade. So for example, if you've got a 1440p monitor, you've got a GTX 1080, uh, I can see the logic of not upgrading. But if you're looking for the best performance, especially from a single card solution, I really I want to see how NVLink is going to scale and how NVIDIA are going to be implementing that. That's going to be really interesting for those who really want to push the frame rates of multi-GPU solutions. Well, yeah. Anyway, with all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. A quick reminder, um, we will be continuing to do review stuff over the next several days. Uh, there's going to be an awful lot of touring stuff, yes, but we've also got some other reviews upcoming. 
Uh, there's also going to be a couple of uh, deep dives and architectural analysis things coming on the channel and so much more besides. For those who also don't know, perhaps this is the first video you're watching, this is not normally the setup I'm using, but I'm currently residing in Seattle. Uh, so yeah, we're kind of doing things a little bit differently, hence why there's no like screens and stuff in the background. But we're managing, we're pulling through, darn it and we're going to do it together. That's a group hug. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, you can answer them, you can write them down below or send them to me on Pages Manager. And with all of that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.